Hey guys, so I promised you one final video in the sensitive series on how I go about using products with sensitive skin or even sensitized skin. I think it's really just a case of semantics in a lot of instances, but basically how I go about rebuilding the skin's barrier in a way that allows the skin to recover from a sensitive period or perhaps the use of products that didn't suit your skin and pave the way for you to start to build an active routine with confidence, which can be really hard when you've had setbacks, where you've reacted to ingredients, or you've reacted to a couple of different products, and you're really trying to kind of find your way as to what the culprits might be so that you can avoid them in the future um, and build a skincare routine with confidence. Okay, so when I see someone in clinic who's got reactive skin, the first thing I do is essentially stop everything and whilst there may be the suggestion that there's a contact allergy which might necessitate patch testing formally at a later point in time i think for a lot of people the practical approach to just trying to rebuild a routine with the least complicated products and um, slowly one product by product then you can often find a way forward um, and build a routine without having to go to the bother of further investigating, but sometimes it's necessary. Each case is judged on its own merits. So where I go to, to start building a routine, and you may be familiar with some of these products, um, but I think they're worth um, reminding you of. So cleansing, everyone's gonna need a cleanser, even if their skin is, is misbehaving. And I think that the La Roche-Posay Tolerian Dermo Cleanser, this is when we keep in the clinic for reactive, irritable skin, super simple it has eight ingredients one of which is water and it's free of anything that's likely to to cause skin problems um, of the sensitive variety so really suitable you can use it around your eyes as well it can be used without water although i usually recommend um, rinsing it clear with tepid water and can be used morning and night if you really don't feel you need to cleanse your skin in the morning i think during this period of time splashing it with water alone is fine so this tends to be my go-to. Um, alternatives include the Aven Tolerance Extreme Cleanser, um, which is of a similar nature. Again, kind of um, very few ingredients, nothing that's going to irritate. And they don't even use preservatives because it's in a sort of sterile cosmetic packaging. Moisturizer-wise, I tend to go Aven, and this one is the Tolerance um, extreme emulsion, which is basically squalene based, so it's a lovely texture. Um, only seven ingredients again, no preservatives because it's a type of packaging, um, which is this rather unforgiving sort of packaging, which I'm going to show you. <laughs> Produces really large dollops, that's the one kind of caveat with it, but that type of dispensing means that you can happily um, store it without using preservatives, and since preservatives are quite a common cause of sensitive to even allergy, um, they can exclude them. Also from Aven, the Recovery Cream, which comes in a rich and a light format. The rich is based on mineral oil, glycerin and squalene, and is a little bit heavier duty. Um, and I like that one as well. Perhaps could use that one at night and this one in the daytime. Now, I might also use a mild topical steroid, like 1% hydrocortisone, if someone is very, red, itchy, sore, angry patches of eczema, that sort of thing. So you might calm the skin down with some anti-inflammatory treatment alongside using these things. Um, but that will be it. And I will tend to approach the skin like that for, I don't know, two weeks. So I might treat them with mild topical steroids for five to seven days, even a little bit longer if necessary. But then I will bring them off the topical steroid and leave them on just cleansing and moisturizing um, tools like these and usually give it another week to make sure that things don't bubble up to the surface again suggesting that we haven't eliminated a common trigger so things are improving everything is feeling more settled more calm and you know now is the time to start thinking about adding in the essentials one by one now in terms of things like oops, eye makeup remover, I tend to stick to this, Biodermis and Sibio, um, albeit rinsing off the residue with water after um, it's been used. But this tends to be very well tolerated in most skin types, so I will have that in the kit. Um, 
And then the next step is probably to bring in sunscreen since we're planning to build a sort of a scientifically sound uh, routine for, for individuals um, who've got reactive skin. So sunscreen in this context, I tend to go mineral. I might well move on to a hybrid sunscreen later on when the skin is completely settled and everything is back to normal. But in this instance, the safest is going to be an all physical sunscreen. So something like uh, Elta MD's UV Physical, which is actually specifically designed to be used after things like procedures. So when the skin barrier is usually reduced and therefore there's increased absorption of products because on the skin, so that's considered really nice and safe. It's just um, zinc and titanium. And then this one from Neostrata, these are both kind of in my skin tone, so it's suitable for fair to medium tone skin. Um, also um, zinc and titanium only. And the tint is just good because if you've got that little bit of redness in your skin, from whatever you've been reacting to, your period of sensitivity, this masks it quite nicely. Um, and it also means you're not having to wear foundation. So for, again, for somebody who's having reactive skin, probably use this instead of base. Even, you know, foundations might potentially keep in the skin up with a little bit of fragrance in them, as they so often have. So this is a great next step in your path to rebuilding your routine. So I might give sunscreen another week or so to settle in before thinking about adding anything else into the routine. So we're now at about week three, and that's the right sort of time frame, two to three weeks, I think, for it to take for the skin barrier to really start to rebuild. But if all is going smoothly at this point in time, I might then think about adding in a moisturizer that further assists with barrier building. And that might be something like flawless moisturizer, or CeraVe moisturizing cream. This has ceramides, this has niacinamide, which helps boost barrier function through increased um, skin synthesis of ceramides. So we're starting to move into a kind of slightly more, um, if you say, cosmetically fun space with some like more elegant products. And again, able to build in a stronger moisturizer, that's a good sign. That shows that the skin is healing, it's settling. Um, and I think at that time, you may also decide to move on to a more robust cleanser. A lot of people don't particularly love the feeling of a sort of a lotion type product, a gel cleanser gives you that sort of slightly cleaner feeling and probably is a more effective cleanse when combined with water. But if you're super, super sensitive, this stuff is awesome. So I think we have a few things growing now and the next step then, if this is all going to plan, so you might be at week four now, and you can see this is how slow I go. I take things week by week, no sudden changes and everything is planned in a considered way. Now is a good time to think about adding in an active. Now, it really depends on your skin type and what your main concerns are, but in the routine finder for Dr. Sam's range, um, we've made Brightly our kind of go-to for those with sensitive skin, perhaps concerned with some redness, um, a sort of a background quality in their skin because of the azelaic acid concentration in Brightly which is a good anti-inflammatory skin calming ingredient, but it's also good for pigmentation and breakouts. So that's the kind of thing you might think about introducing now if you have further concerns beyond just simply maintaining your skin. So if that's of interest, do download the Routine Finder and go through it um, to get the right routine for your skin. Other actives you could think about introducing, um, niacinamide we mentioned, which is good for pigmentation, for blemishes, um, and helps boost barrier function. Um, we can think about a gentle retinoid, but again, slowly, slowly, it's a kind of product you'd introduce every second or even every third night. You might buffer with moisturizer first, pea-sized amount only, and really do it slowly so that you're increasing the frequency of use and the quantity of use every two to four weeks. So you're definitely in the slow lane and that's okay. Um, so I think that's a structure for building a skincare routine for sensitive skin. On prescription, I still think we have a lot of space to work with and sometimes prescription products are a little bit easier. So for example, if we're trying to build an acne routine with something like adapalene, again, not too many ingredients to deal with. So really we're just of monitoring someone's skin's behavior with the retinoid side of things. We're not so concerned about other ingredients in the product causing issues. But that might be something that you find easier to do with a physician's guidance. If you have significant acne or significant rosacea, um, get 
some help with that because even just a one-off appointment, it can really help you have the confidence to go forward building an effective routine for your skin and to get the most out of your products safely. So that's my approach to treating sensitive skin with some sensitivity and the products I'd recommend to help you on that journey. I hope you found this um, overview of sensitive skin helpful and that it helps you get the results that you want. And I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.